Hi software engineers, back to talk about the planning game. So this aspect of extreme programming is both a method of requirements elicitation and requirements modeling. And it's an opportunity for the requirements engineer to sit down with the stakeholders or representative set of stakeholders to come up with what the software is going to look like. So this is actually what we are going to do for guided practice C this week on the planning game. So the basic idea is um, you're going to have a stack of note cards digitally, I guess. Um, I'm going to have my actual stack here to show you what it looks like. And you're going to write uh, the customers, the stakeholders, are going to write a list, uh, are going to write a user story on the front of the card. Okay. So I should back up and say, this is one you can't do by yourself, really. This is one where you really need at least four people total. So please come to the session on Thursday. Or if you're going to do it with a group, you really need to have at least four people to make this work. So you're going to split up into two teams, either two and two, three and two, three and three. Anything like that is fine. But please, 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 please go do this with other people. Okay. So what will happen is um, the, the stakeholders will start with the note cards. And you could just use a, a Google document or something like that. Or, or you know, Google spreadsheet, Google, uh, you could use a... Um, Google um, slides deck and each slide is a note card. That could be an interesting way of doing it. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you could pull this off. So basic idea, stakeholders write a user story. So a single sentence as a blank, I want or the system shall do blank so that blank. Some basic statement like that. If you need more help with that, there are the links to the Mountain Goat software website um, and also the XP user stories link that were in the previous video. You can go take a look at those to get some more, more ideas. So you write down what you think a good user story should be. Then you hand that card immediately to the developers. Okay? You don't wait. You don't like make the entire stack, then hand the stack over. And the, meanwhile, the developer is just sitting there twiddling their thumbs. No, you write, a, you write a user story and you immediately say, Developers, I need you to take a look at this user story. Developers. The next thing that you do is you're going to write a number in the upper right-hand corner of that card. And that number uh, basically corresponds to how difficult you think that user story would be to implement. And here, here's one example. You could go from one is trivial, two a couple hours, three at least a day, five a couple days, eight a week, 13 really hard, or I don't even know. Notice this is a Fibonacci sequence, basically showing that you're kind of moving to tiers of difficulty. Um, so maybe you look at the story and you say, oh, this is probably about a three. Sounds good. You write a three on it. Then you flip the card over and write some test, some specific test that would let you know whether you succeeded to make that user story or not. Okay. Once the card set of cards is completed, you work together, developers and stakeholders, to put the cards in order of what you think the most important features are at, at the top, all the way to the least important features at the bottom. And that becomes your sprint backlog. That's the order you should be pulling the, the cards off, the features off your list. That's you know how you're gonna go about building the system. And with those user story points there, if you know that, okay, as a team, because we've been working together for years and because we've been using this methodology, we know that we as a team average about 30 points per sprint, then you say, oh, okay, let's take, you know, the first, you know, four of the five, you know, the four or five point ones, and there's an eight point one, that's 28. And you're like, okay, that seems good. That seems like about what we normally can accomplish during one sprint. Um, you see how far you get, you revise your numbers for the next sprint. You might revise some numbers on the cards, but this way you can have a concrete plan to say, we know about what we can complete in a certain amount of time. We've evaluated these requirements based upon this, this point system, and that allows us to do our sprint planning. Perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you uh, behind the scenes a little bit here. Welcome to my desk cam. I've got my, uh, my cards here, um, and you can see my green screen in the back, which I'm not going to set up to, to show, <laughs> to show uh, the lawn while I'm doing this. But let's say I'm doing a... Um, Let's say I'm doing a uh, system for a, an alarm clock. Okay, so um, as a um, as a user, the system shall keep accurate time. Okay, so I've written my user story. 
There it is. There it is. Yes, that, just trust that's what that says. Um, and so now I hand this over to the developer. The developer over here at camera one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate this user story card. Let me go. System shall keep accurate time. Well, you know what? As a developer, I know that that is not that tough a thing to do. Matter of fact, I, if this is an internet connected clock, I could tie it to... I mean, this is just a... There's a, there's a circuits that do this. This is easy. So, you know, I'm going to go back and, and the developer is going to say, all right, that's cool. I'm going to put this down as a two. Just I'm picking a number. And then I'm going to say, um, verify time on clock five times during the day uh, with NIST or, you know, some other, some other body, just to, you know, we verify the time is correct that many times. Um, and so I'm actually going to be very specific. I'm going to say, check it at 12 o'clock noon, 12 o'clock midnight, uh, 2.37 p.m., uh, 4.02 p.m., and 10... 1 a.m. Now I'm intentionally picking some of these times um, because noon and midnight are interesting as far as test cases go. That's where you know the, the date's going to turn over or or, or not. Um, and so you want to make sure that's happening. I picked um, some a.m. and some p.m. I picked some numbers where there's a zero in the front and you know like the hour where there's not a zero. So I'm actually trying to spread my test cases out. When we get to verification and validation, we'll talk more about this. So back to the desk cam. One card. Developers go back. We've put that in the stack. Let's write. Let's write another user story here. Um, as a user, the system shall allow me to set a an alarm time when the time is. Met, I don't know. Uh, buzz loudly. <laughs> Not a great one, but you know, you you get the you get the idea. I mean, I could we could do more interesting um, uh, interesting things here, such as uh, play music or something else. So again, let's take that back to Ken. Uh, here you go, here you go, developer. Back here to camera one. Oh, thank you so much. And we look at this. Okay, uh, I'm just for argument's sake, I'm going to say this is a five because um and then you know pretend i'm writing yada 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 good test case um just for time's sake uh haha -ha, time's sake uh, bad joke um but we'll check to make sure that when the you know you set an alarm time multiple times and that there's some sort of loud sound if you want to get really technical about it we could have a decibel meter as to whether it's really loud or not so we want it to be as you know as good as possible see that test case it's just amazing okay now we have gone back and forth with our customer and developer passing the cards, writing the user stories, writing the test, making sure we get those user story points in there. And then we put them in a stack and we say, well, uh, we have to keep accurate time before we have a good um, alarm time. So that's our stack. Pretend there's more cards here. Boom. Uh, that is our, sorry for shaking the camera. That is our list of requirements in the order that we are going to tackle them as a team. And that's one way of doing requirements, elicitation and modeling for an agile environment. And it's kind of what y'all are gonna do in a sense. So for the planning game, for the, um, for the guided practice, you're gonna do exactly what I just did, except you're gonna do it a little bit more digitally. And then there's a set of questions downhill, your answer about um, your experience with the activity, that sort of thing, okay? Now for, your actual requirements for your project. You're going to do a mix. So you're going to do all of, you're going to do a couple of the requirements techniques that we talked about in the elicitation video. My suggestion is you definitely do a survey because that's pretty easy to do in this environment. And I suggest you do interview and you target a few students that you know, that you know would give you some straight answers. Um, there are other ones you could do. You could do a prototype. That'd be fantastic. Um, but it's, it's up to you. Don't do a JAD. That makes no sense in this environment. That makes no sense for a student project anyway. So do those, do those elicitation techniques. And then you are going to generate 
the user stories, not with a customer. Wow, that really messed up my green screen. That was really interesting. Um, you'll generate the user stories and come up with the with the user story points to put in your Google Sheet. So it, it, you're not going to do the full planning game, but you will generate requirements based upon the data that comes in as user stories that you'll then put in that document. So that's the basics of the guide to practice this week. That is the general idea of what you are going to do for the requirements document, which is for Sprint 2 for your project. Requirements managers, you really need to take a close look at the requirements document. They'll tell you how to do it. There you go. If you have any questions about this, please let us know. Remember, this is a guided practice that you really need to have at least four people to do, okay? So if you're gonna do it on your own, fine. Just make sure you have four people to do it and do it honestly, please, or come to Thursday's class um, and we will, uh, we will group you with folks and you'll have a chance to go do it. So there you go. That is the planning game. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Always great to see you. Take care. Ah.